Upon the whitewashed crosses standing over the seemingly endless graves of unknown soldiers who died in the great world wars of the past century, these words are engraved. Here lies in glory and honor, or a comrade in arms, or known but to God. Certainly no one can read these words and look upon the graves of those fallen men without being sobered. Yet to those who understand the biblical doctrine of the resurrection of the dead, these same graves, these same graves are a pure sign of the incredible power of the living God who will one day make all these men stand upon their feet and live again. The basic Bible doctrine, well, briefly stated, the doctrine of the resurrection is the truth that the God who resurrected Jesus Christ will also raise to life again, that is resurrect all the dead. For some, that resurrection will be to eternal life. For others, it will be to physical life with an opportunity for eternal life. For some few, it will be a resurrection to the second death. Now, the usual teachings of this world, as you can well imagine, go totally contrary to what the Bible teaches us. The religionists of this world, they rarely address the doctrine of the resurrection, surely because they do not understand it. The few who do usually misunderstand either the time, purpose, nature or numbers of the resurrections. Some, in a feeble attempt to reconcile the non-biblical doctrine of the immortal soul with the resurrection, contrive a vague theory that the resurrection is not a resurrection at all, but merely a reuniting of the body of a deceased person with his immortal soul, which had been liberated at death and has been living without the body since. Certainly, such a theory is in no way supported by the Bible, but it is a good place to begin a study of this important subject. Now, what is the Bible teaching? Well, it is interesting and the greatest hope, I would say, that the Bible offers us, the greatest hope that God gives us in this life, is indeed the fact that death will be conquered by life. Not only by life, but by eternal life. You see, the resurrection is one good proof that man does not have an immortal soul. If man had an immortal soul, which today's religionists would say lives after death, why would a resurrection from the dead be needed in the first place? Numerous utterly dogmatic Bible statements promise the dead the hope of life again after death. Notice words of the Apostle Paul in his defense before Felix. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. These are Paul's words quoted in Acts chapter 24, verse 14 and 15. To those who doubted that a resurrection for all would occur, Jesus Christ proclaimed in John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming, in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Further, even Old Testament writers, like righteous Job and Daniel, knew and spoke of the resurrection from the dead. Job in his book chapter 14 verse 14 and 15 and Daniel in his book chapter 12 verse 2. In addition to the wonderful promises of God himself, we have an actual example we can look to as visible proof positive that God can and will resurrect the dead. That example of course is the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our elder brother. The fact of the resurrection is clearly shown from the biblical eyewitness records and informed testimony Romans 1 verse 4, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. But many have overlooked that while Christ's death pays for our sins, nonetheless, as Romans 5 10 says, we shall be saved by his life. A life he is still living in us daily since his resurrection, which brought him back to life, and he is living in us daily through the power of God's Holy Spirit. And through the power of this Holy, the same Holy Spirit that also is in Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. So, we are saved by his life as he is living in us daily. Further, 
His resurrection is incredibly important for, to us for another reason. It proves by example that God can and will resurrect us. Since Christ was resurrected, we can be too. He was not to be the only one resurrected, just, he was just the first. Notice, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also vain. Verse 20 and 22. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits, not only one of them that slept, which means dies. And for as in Adam all die, so even in Christ shall all be made alive. Yet the promise of the resurrection is indeed the very hope of all of us, since we are all mortal, only mortal, and unless resurrected, we will die and remain dead without hope of eternal life. Nonetheless, the time and nature of this resurrection will not be the same for all. Paul stresses, verses 22 and 23, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but each one in his own order. Now this passage of scripture goes on to say that Christ was first, Christ the first fruits, and then, verse 23, afterward, those who are Christ's at his coming. Hence we see that, besides God, the first group to be resurrected from the dead are those who are called and chosen by of God. Those who are Christ's, that is, in whom the Holy Spirit dwells as a result of repentance and proper baptism, see Romans 8 verse 9. Also, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 speaks of the same time. In Revelation 20 verse 4 through 6, Revelation 24 to 6 confirms the same event. Those who are resurrected then will be resurrected as spirit beings who cannot die. They cannot die as it says in verse 6. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Which means during the millennium. Now this is not the only resurrection. Verses 5 and 6 refer specifically to this resurrection as the first resurrection. Verse 5 tells us when the next the second general resurrection will occur in God's plan. The rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years, millennium, were finished. This resurrection will be of all those who lived and died and for one reason or another have not had a chance for salvation. Obviously this group comprises the bulk of humanity for only relatively few have ever heard the name of Jesus let alone truly received God's Holy Spirit. Therefore, this resurrection is not of the spirit to eternal life. These, of course, have not yet qualified for God's kingdom. But this is to physical life with finally a chance to learn of God's truth and qualify for his kingdom. Note for proof verses 11 and 12 of Revelation 20, which find the rest of the dead at the time after the millennium resurrected before God. Not to be condemned, but to have the word of God open to their understanding, so they can learn of God and qualify for his kingdom. This is indeed the second resurrection. The second resurrection is spoken of more fully in Ezekiel 37, verse 1 through 14, where the physical nature of the resurrection is clearly seen, and where it is evident that the resurrected ones will finally know God. Finally, the Bible speaks of yet one more resurrection, for the group not dealt with in either of the other two. This is the call, this is called commonly among us the third resurrection. It is a resurrection to the second death, since those resurrected will be cast into the lake of fire and burned up. Daniel spoke of this resurrection in his book chapter 12 verse 2, where he said some would be resurrected to life and some to, as he said, shame. Christ also spoke of this resurrection in John 5 verse 29 and called it the res he called it the resurrection of condemnation. Revelation 20 verse 14 says that then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The second death is actually a type of mercy killing because those who die in the lake of fire because of the twisted thinking they, that led them to become worthy of such a fate in the first place, they would, if given eternal life, live out immortality in misery.
yet in these three resurrections are contained the hope of all humanity. That hope is the promise of life after death in the resurrection from the dead. Now, of course, the resurrections, as any other biblical doctrine, has key verses. You know, with any doctrinal subject such, such as this one, it is good to remember or even mark it in one's Bible, the most important scriptures on on a, on a subject. So here are some of the on the resurrections. John 5 verse 21 and 29 and Acts chapter 24 verses 14 and 15, both Jesus Christ and the apostle Paul predicted the resurrections. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 12 through 24, since Christ was resurrected, we will be also. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, Revelation 20, verse 4, 5, and 6. The first resurrection is here explained. And the second, re- second resurrection is explained and described in Revelation 20, verse 5, and 6, uh, and verse 12, as well as Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. Now, the third resurrection is described in Revelation 20, verse 13 and 14, and in, in the Gospel of John, verse 5, uh, that is uh, chapter 5, verse 29. In conclusion, dear friends, yes, to some, those who died over the years, like the fallen soldiers mentioned at the start, may indeed be unknown or, though perhaps known, unremembered. But God knows them and he will not forget them at all. Yet, to them and to all of us mortals who know we shall die but know not the hour, God offers the blessed hope we may all long for the resurrection of the dead to life again with the hope of eternal glory.